Hello and welcome, I hope you're doing alright. I'm doing all good. Um, so, got a bit more of a permanent solution for the water butt that I touched on last video or the video before. Um, you can see I've raised it up, that's for the gravity situation which we'll get to in a bit. Got my little rig up there and nine, nine holes coming out the wall. So, we'll just run through the method to the madness a little bit. This is a garage which runs through to the front of the house. About this last two metres is a separate room with a solid wall two metres in. Um, which is a bit of a building so I think it was going to be a kitchen but I'm going to turn it into an office so I need to get it ready for plastering so I can paint it and actually use it. The middle third i.e. the other side of the wall that's two metres inside um, I'm going to make into a utility and then the last third will be the actual garage but so essentially all the utility pipes which we'll get to like the uh, hot and cold and whatnot are all coming from the garage on the utility so I thought what I'd do if I put the holes through here the holes through the solid wall on the inside then I can just feed these long pipes through and then these aren't actually the pipes I'm going to use for anything they're just like sleeving so what the theory is is there's two sizes there. The bottom three are inch and a half, which is the sort of kitchen sink waste size, you know, for your kitchen sink. And then the other six are overflow pipe, which is just, just under 22 mil. But the 22 mil ones, you can feed 15 mil pipe through, um, which is what one size of your sort of water system is. The other size is 22, and I can feed that one through the other one, as you can see down there in the bottom. So. They basically run through what that means is I can box up and get that room ready for plastering and then when the time comes I can just feed pipes through from the garage and they'll just stick their head out like the one at the bottom here. So at the bottom coming through you can just see the actual pipe coming through that um, sleeve in if you like. Uh, that is going to come from the water butt so I've just fed it through there it's all coiled up in the garage at the moment so when I get a moment I'll run it out and it'll just stick its head out like this and then come up and connect exactly the same to any water barrels that I'm going to have out the front uh, which will just in increase the capacity um, so these are 210 litre I thought they were 300 but they're 210 uh, so you know if I get two or three out the front I could have 800 litres of rainwater ready to go so um, that's what that is it just comes out goes into an elbow, tucks up behind that pipe, comes up and then goes on to the end of rig there where that blue lever is and that's a shut off valve so if I ever need to do any adjustments I can separate the actual stored water so I don't have to lose any. Um, thing of note, if you're ever doing any stuff with this plastic pipe in the 15 or the 22 mil, <coughs> it's nice and easy to take apart and things like that so that's why it's quite good but just remember you'll need these little pipe inserts here, these two silver ones, they slip into the end of the pipe before you put the fitting on, it just stops the pipe because it's only little teeth so if the pipe expanded or contracted with heat it could blow off, it probably wouldn't under this thing but you know like mains and heating systems and things like that so yeah that's that so yeah so that one will be connected up to the water butts at the front come up and then supply in here you can see ice cream van good timing and um, you can see this is hooked up to the same pipe so in my mind as long as I put these water butts out the front the same height as this one then it should all be equal pressure because they're up high which we'll get to in a minute the next one is actually going to be used as a kitchen waste it's the only one it's because I moved the boiler there was a boiler here you can see I've just cemented in the flue hole behind the hopper today um, I've moved it actually to the utility ie the other side of that wall that's um, two meters away in there that you can't see um, but it's got a condensed pipe on your new boilers which needs to run into a drain so that's the main reason that is I'll just connect the boiler up to that and I'll just run through here but it also gives me the option of if I want to put like a washing machine in that area or a sink I can do and it'll all go away to a proper drain there uh, so that's that one the next one up is actually just a spare one I just thought I'd do an extra hole while I'm there an inch and a half so that's that um, so that'll be a rainy day hole for if I want to do anything with it. The next one up, the first of the 22 mil, that'll be a 15 mil pipe coming through there. That'll be the cold off the main, and then running. If you can see where that's coming out, run along these bricks to out here, um, and sort of away from all this. If you see what I mean, 
outside tap and then that gives me mains water out here the one above that will be hot hot water the reason i'm thinking that is that if i have a good dog um i might want to put like an outside shower in so it just means that i can feed a hot fruit from the utility bring it out here and put a shower out here somewhere wherever it's going to go so it's just a bit of flexibility the two after that are a bit of an indulgence um they are the for or earmarked for the flow and return which is your radiator pipe work um, the only reason I'm thinking that is I had a bit of an out there moment where I thought if I'm this is going to be a pergola here and I do like uh, I'm starting to get a real like a shine to the sciathias you can see I've got one down there uh, but I think I might get a couple more uh, like two to go in the other side of these windows in pots that would be up high I did run through the other time but I just thought for overwintering rise it's unrealistic to overwinter them inside but I thought as there's going to be a pergola going up across here I could probably put a little plastic roof on it in the winter move this trellis out a bit um, to line up with the fence post uh, which is where the edge of the pergola is going to be down here um, and then I could make up a little sort of cold frame and I just thought you know what I could do if they're particularly fussy is on the last bit of the circuit so I'm not really using any fuel it's just sort of not wasted heat nothing's wasted heat but you know what I mean just on the end of the circuit I could run a little radiator inside that sealed area and then if it just got really cold in the area which it shouldn't do because it'd be underneath plastic um, you know I could put a little frost stat on it and then it just automatically kick in you know, all the noises going off today and it ice cream vans lorries and seagulls the unholy trinity um, but anyway yeah so that's just a little you know indulgence on my part and then the last two pipes are going to be for the electric so what it is you can see this armored cable here which are tied with blue at the end as soon as it dives under there it goes into this inch and a half pipe again like sleeving it and that runs all the way up that flower bed right up to the corner where the fat here is in the corner and then runs across and at the moment you can't really see that middle flower bed with the loff of sawyer in um, but that it then just sticks its head above ground over in that area both of them there's a light uh, a light and circuit one and a mains cable one for a socket and light and circuit they're just coiled up under all the rocks um, in the corner there that's going to be a big waterfall and I probably need a socket where that banana is in the center of the screen at the back there somewhere in around that I'm going to need to put the waterfall pump um, and you know lights so but uh, for now all we need to think about is that this armoured cable needs to terminate into that special weatherproof boxing and then what will actually go through and connect up to the board in the garage, uh, the, the consumer board, um, will be the um, just normal wire if you see what I mean, so it won't need to be armoured out inside. Um, which means I could, should be able to get both through one of them but if not I've got a spare one or if they will both go through then what that allow me to do is bring another set out from the circuit board same again and then have a socket and a light switch over here somewhere so I could run some lights in the pergola um, and you know have a socket because I might this is going to be covered up to up to this um, fence post here and sort of this sort of square here uh, I'm going to cover it with plastic permanently um, and then um, that just means that if I want to have a little desk out here <laughs> and work I need a socket so um, yeah that's what that's for so anyway that's what all those holes are for that's why I've gone so many it's a bit OTT but you know I'm better off having them um, because once that's all plastered and sealed up I'm not going to want to take it apart on the inside of there so you know if I don't use them I'll just blank them off and they won't be used no no skin off no one's teeth so yeah so it brings me up to this bit here so like I said that elbow coming in from the right is from the other water butts this top one is from this water butt and then they'll both mix into these two outside taps that's actually two circuits for the irrigation so I can have the irrigation running off fresh water as it were well not fresh water but you know what I mean rainwater because we've got quite hard water here and a lot of my plants like it acidic so I don't know whether that neutralizes any acidity if you know what I mean because I'm putting tap water on them so yeah so the first one or one of them will be just for anything that is lower than the bottom of this barrel ie you know the flower beds basically all the way around 
they're all lower and then what that should mean is that I can just run a pipe straight up to that if I want to put a timer on it I can do and then when I need to water the bottom flower beds I can just undo the tap and it'll just be the weight of the water pushing it through um, the second tap will be for the higher irrigation as I'm calling it which will be stuff like uh, where that plant pot is on that seat in the center of the screen at the back can you see the flower bed with the three bits of wood at the top sort of third of the fence uh, there is a flower bed there was a couple of ferns in there at the moment so that's obviously higher than the water but so it won't push the water up there so I'll need some form of pressure for that if I put any thing in the waterfall I'll probably need to get water up there because it'll probably just be pots placed in little holes that I'll make um, so I'll need pressure up there um, the vertical garden obviously I'll just drip it in from the top but it still needs to get to the top but I'm probably going to move that vertical garden and do it around these posts for the um, pergola and then I'll just train a climber up there because um, it seems a, a shame to waste that space when I could get some good climbers in there so that's for another video and then anything like a tree fern like this I had this experimental bit of irrigation coming up the middle of the fence as you can see there that's got a little like mist spray uh, fitting on it and just makes it like a cloud forest so anywhere where there's going to be a tree fern or anywhere thing that likes it humid um, that will need to run off that circuit as well and then in order to get the pressure um, I'll need to put like a pump or something on it down here um, but yeah at the moment because I'll have the outside tap for the mains water here I can just rig it up to that for now you know next summer maybe and then just experiment with the pumps and that and then I've got a little bit of wiggle room coming across and you can see what I am going to do is run pipe from that last outside tap to this fitting here which is 22 on one end and 15 on the other um, and then that will come down here come across next to this outside tap that's already here and that will be an outside tap for fresh water rain water so that I can fill up um, watering cans um, you know from from the water butt sort of thing um, so that's all that sort of covered um, yeah it's all I've used compression fittings here which is where you've got the nuts and olives and things um, because they're a little bit and um, they're not as bulky as the plastic fittings when you get up to the 22 size so I just wanted to ram it all in there but otherwise all in plastic um, what else are we uh, today? Oh yeah, what I was going to do, you can see I've left those pipes out the wall a little bit. What my plan is to do is once they're in there and I've done whatever I'm doing with the electrics and whatnot, um, is this stuff which I get from HelloFresh which insulates the freezer stuff. But you can see it's actually pretty good insulation. I've actually been keeping this ever since we've been getting the HelloFresh for six months or whatever. So I've got a F ton of them <laughs> in the garage, shall we say. So what I'm thinking is, is like if I keep it in the plastic and strap it to that wall uh, dub double it up maybe that should bring out the thickness of this wood i can then put some plywood straight down on top of it all a so it insulates it all but then what it'll do is i can mount any pumps or timers for the irrigation on top of the wood that would be above all of that and then that'll make it a bit easier to make a little warm box because it's electrics so i'm going to want to keep it you know frost free effectively so um yeah that just means that i can down in this area here i can sort of insulate it up even if i have to do something against the back fence um yeah yeah so all i did obviously that drain pipe was just coming straight out of that square gutter and just going straight down almost in line with the bottom half of that one if you like um <clears throat> so when you're doing these uh, water butt connections just make sure that the levels are the same because if say for example this one that's going into the water butt is lower than the one on the um, pipe because it acts as an overflow it'll start overflowing out the top of the tank first but you don't want it too high up obviously you want it to be dead level if you can I've done the best I can um, but because obviously if it's too high up then the water won't want to go up there anyway if you see what I mean so uh, that's all in there and another important thing if ever you're doing if ever you buy water butts and you've got this stuff that just sort of clips together it will always leak believe me it will always leak so what I've done is I've taken it apart um, 
this is really good stuff it's about a fiver for a tube like this which is way more than you need it's a non-setting silicon effectively um, and what you would do like I've done here is <coughs> the spigot fitting with the corrugated pipe is sort of slipped over that's how it comes take it apart get a little bit of that on your finger and just rub it around the spigot and then jam it back on and then the connector that's actually going through there and there's a nut on the inside of the water butt which tightens up onto it when you've drilled the hole just sort of the outside of the thread where you've got the little bit where the washer goes do, do that, put the washer in, do it, and then tighten it on, and then that just means gives it waterproof. I've done that at that end as well, not in the actual guttering stuff, just where the corrugated bit goes onto the spigot for the cut in there. And then I've put a hopper there. Uh, you probably haven't been thinking why, but there is method to the madness, again. So this pergola, I'm gonna do it slightly leaning down from the house and the reason for that is, is that if at a future date I wanted to put a plastic corrugated roof on it I can do um, and it will mean that I can you know the water will be taken away from the house and then what I'm kind of thinking is if I can run some gutter in on top of that post effectively I don't know how I'm going to do it yet but <laughs> I'll get someone who knows uh, Chippy to come round and have a look at it with me but if, I, if you can think there's a gutter running from the top of that um sorry i went up too high that gray post if you like gutter running from there all the way across the two posts that are going to be here on top of that this i.e this side of the trellis across to here and then cut across the top of the gate and then i can hopefully dispose of it in the hopper i know it doesn't line up very well height wise but you know i could just easily cut a little block out and put it on top of that fence post just to raise it up a little bit if i need to um, or something like that anyway but it's just nice and flexible this thing comes apart really easy because i've got that join in it uh, the, the 290s instead of me having to worry about lifting it up and out and you know trying to you know get some wiggle room all i do is just undo one of those undo the clip a little bit and then i'll be able to just pull that elbow to the right and it will slip off that and then I can do any amendments nice and easy this is a nice height and it also means that I'm going to get a little mesh like chicken wire mesh and put it in the bottom of the hopper it means any leaves or moss that comes off the top and tries to go down to save me take it it's nice and easy to take apart it just all slips out but um, I can get the most of it up there in the hopper ready to go um, so yeah so I can get that out nice and easy but other than that I'm pretty happy next thing here really is just deciding what's going on with the electrics i.e where do i want the sockets you know do i want to put all the light switches in this little section here you know for the for the for the back circuit if i put any lights against the fence up there or anything like that or do i want to have a separate light switch up that end for them and have them here or have the sockets here or have some over there or however i just need to work out how i'm going to do that but other than that, I'm quite happy with that. That's all ready to um, start collecting water. So, um, happy days. Um, yeah, so at some point I'll do another one on the garden. I did actually, I went around the garden centre and got a few cheap plants. Well, they, they weren't cheap, but they were cheaper than they should have been. I'll give you a little sneak preview. If you can just see behind that left bar stool there. That is a new Cyathea. We'll go up and have a look at him actually because I do like looking at him. But these things are absolutely great. If I can get a sort of realistic way of over in winter, over wintering them, I just love the height and the spread you get on them at height when they're this size. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, if I dotted one or two in this area somehow, you know, if I could get maybe a hardy species for there, have the medullaris, which is the ones with the black stem, where that climber is and to the right of that and to the right of the kitchen window so that marries up quite nicely under the pergola um, and get a few this is another Coopi, uh, Cooper Cooperii, Cooperii um, which is the small one that I've got over there apparently in a couple of years time that one over there will get this big but run through that one and the next one and just because I know you're all asking T-Rex is doing all right that looks like a T-Rex leaf to me so I'm pretty happy I've had a few battles with um aphids and well not aphids but the white fly ones yeah so I basically <coughs> didn't walk around this for about a week and it was like a spider's 
the orgy going on um, just all against the climbing frame in it and there's hundreds of them there's some real big spiders here now so I've done my part for that and also the heavy artillery turned up I seen a um, devil's coach horse beetle which I thought was a termite first of all it was massive and it moved so quick I didn't get a picture of it and I was literally just sat down next to it and it just stormed out but we're going to that next time so yeah hope you're good see you later